If you only have one eyeball to play with, it's not so difficult to tell what you're looking at and what you're not looking at. But when you're using two eyeballs, they have to be both dancing in the same direction. Your brain has two sets of instructions to coordinate and two sets of images to integrate. This is why it's helpful to practice Bates' method with first one eye and then the other. And the way you do this is to shade the eye you're not using with the back of your hand so that you're not obscuring all the light. You can try covering your eye completely if you find that more comfortable, but most people find it too much of a contrast and it generates tension. If you use the back of your hand you still get a bit of light getting into that eye so it, it still has something to do. So you shade first one eye then you do your technique again with the other eye. Always remembering to close your eyes at regular intervals to bring in the memory and the imagination and to allow your eyes to rest. How do we perceive objects at different distances away from us? Our model eyeballs here have three dice in a row to look at. The nearest is number one, the next nearest is number two, and the furthest away is number three. We can choose to direct our attention towards number one, number two, or number three. And if our eyeballs are following our attention, they will converge at those distances, and we will get a combined image made up of the two separate sets of information which makes it feel 3D. But what happens to the other objects? When we're getting a 3D image of number one, what kind of image are we getting of number two and number three? Let's think about what the right eyeball sees. Number one is a bit to the left. Number two is to the right of number one. Number three is to the right of number two. They appear in order from left to right. One, two, three. But what does the left eyeball see? Number one is a bit to the right, number two is to the left of number one, number three is to the left of number two. They appear in inverse order, from left to right. Three, two, one. If I hold a piece of string to my nose, and the other end is tied to a chair leg or something, somewhere away from me, and I have beads threaded on the string at different distances from my nose, I can look along this string and see a different image depending where I'm looking, whether I'm looking at the first bead, or the second bead, or the third bead. I might think it's just a string going straight out into the distance, but if I close my right eye I get this image, and if I close my left eye I get this image. How does my brain make sense of two images that are so obviously different from each other? You can't superimpose them. The answer is that the eyes can only converge on one point at a time and the brain can only make proper sense of the image at that point where the eyes are converging. When I look at the green bead closest to my nose, I see two images of the string crossing over at this point. In front of the green bead are two strings, and behind the green bead are two strings with two red beads and two purple beads. When I shift my attention from the green bead to the red bead, I see the strings crossing over there. Now there is one red bead with two green beads in front and two purple beads behind it. When I shift my attention to the purple bead, that becomes one. Now there are two red beads and two green beads in front and the strings cross over at the purple bead. That's the theory. That's what you'll experience if your eyesight is good and your brain is managing to coordinate both eyes and combine the images easily. You can practice looking from one bead to the next and observing the crossover first at the distance where you see it best, and then gradually moving to other distances, always letting your eyes feel soft and easy. Touch each bead as you look at it, to help keep a sense of movement. What can you do if you only see one string, or if one string appears much fainter than the other? Shade one eye and look along the string. Get a good impression of how it looks to you. Find the point where it looks clearest and place your middle bead there, with another bead in front and behind. Then close your eyes and remember what this looks like. If you need to, have another look, and then close your eyes again. When you've built up a good memory of that image and can describe it to yourself, 
shade the eye you were using and look at the string with the other eye. Find the point where it looks clearest and if it's different for this eye, place a different bead at this point. Close your eyes again and think about what this looks like. Have another look and close your eyes again. If you work at this slowly and patiently, you'll end up with two different ideas of what the string looks like, one for each eye. Now, with your eyes closed, see if you can switch in your imagination between these two ideas. See if you can build up an imagination of what it would be like to see both images at once. Describe to yourself the sort of picture you would get if you were to look at the middle bead or one of the other beads. The next bit is to forget about these ideas. Let your mind go completely blank and then to let your eyes open and look along the string from one bead to the next. Letting your eyes feel soft and easy and just noticing what you see and what you don't see.